If I can simply assume that I am the man that I would like to be, well, certainly the depth of my own being has seen that assumption. He has heard that assumption. Well, now, can I actually believe that that's all I need you? Well, I have to confess that I can't do it on this level. I am not wise enough on this level to devise the means necessary to externalize what I have assumed that I am. Well, have you proved it, Neville? A number of times. A number of times. When I was completely shut out on certain areas, imprisoned, as it were, not in the federal prisons, but a state of imprisonment, to find yourself on an island where you enjoyed four months of it, almost five months, but you have a commitment in America and you've got to get back. And then to be told that there is no possibility of return until the very earliest September. And that will be the very earliest. And your commitment is in Milwaukee in the first week of May. What are you going to do then? No possibility. No ships have taken the passengers. And the list runs into thousands waiting all through the Indies. From Trinidad all the way up, all waiting. And you are in the island of Barbados without making any provision for your return to America when you sailed for Barbados five months before. So what did I do? I simply sat in a chair in my hotel room and I assumed I was on a little tender moving against the boat. Well, that was before the days of a deep water harbor. Now we have a deep water harbor. But then you took a small boat off to the ship waiting maybe a half mile to sea. And then you walked up a gangplank. So I simply stepped up on the gangplank and walked up that gangplank in my mind's eye. If my mind wandered, which it did, I brought it right back to that first step and walked up again. It wandered before I got to the top, I brought it back again. And I trained it as you would a horse. The mind is an unruly animal, so I trained it. And I walked up step after step. When I got to the top, I turned around and put my imaginary hands on the rail. And I could smell the salt of the sea in the air. I looked back with nostalgia at the little island of Barbados. A mixed emotion. I am happy that I'm sailing for America and sad that I'm leaving behind a very large, wonderful family of mine. And then, in that mood, I simply dropped off for a moment in sleep, just a little nap. The next day, I was called by the very company who said that we have no possibility of getting you out of here before at the very earliest September and said there was a cancellation this day in America. And they offered it to me in spite of the list of over a thousand people waiting. It's not my concern why she or he or it canceled the passage. My prayer was answered. I did what I was called upon to do, for repentance is a radical change of attitude. She said, you can't get out. Well, I said, I am out. I'm on a boat, and the boat is headed towards New York City. That's all I wanted to do. So I did my responsibility. And the second part of repentance is a gift from God. So God has the way of externalizing it. What caused the woman or the man or something to cancel the thing? I was told after she was afraid. She was afraid for some reason not explained to make the trip. And so one passage was open and I got that one room because there were only two beds in it and my little girl was only three years old. She could sleep with her mother and I could climb up one flight and sleep on the upper bunk and then take my 11 days back to New York City. So I did what I was called upon to do, that's my responsibility, to enact a scene which would imply the fulfillment of my desire, and then surrender completely to my father, for he has the power to externalize it. I do not know how to do it on this level. I haven't the wisdom, I haven't anything on this level to do it. So my faith is faith in my father, faith in his power, to externalize what I have done, all in imagination.